Yeah, let's kick it off. So, uh, welcome to Finland. We Thank have you. Ricky Warwick from from Black Star Riders, from the yeah. Almighty, from from Thin Lizzy, <laughs> from from your solo band. Yeah, and, and, and the list many, goes many, on. Many yeah, list goes on. <laughs> So uh, uh, the reason why we are here, obviously, you have a new album with Black Star Riders yeah. coming, Heavy Fire, in yeah. uh, February, yeah. I think. Uh, so what's the title, Heavy Fire, first of all? Heavy Fire, uh, was a, the title came to me you know, quite a while before we actually recorded the album. Uh, and I, I just thought it was a cool title. I, I liked the way it kind of carried on from our first album, Well Hell Breaks Loose, second album, Killer Instinct, third album, Heavy Fire. It felt right. And then I kind of wrote a song uh, based on that title. Um, I mean, you know, the presidential election stuff has, has been going on in the United States for the last two years. It's been insane. We all know what happened. Um, the TV reality star got to be the president. And um, so I, I kind of was just documenting that and I wrote about just the craziness of the whole kind of, not just so much the United States, but the world and the situation that we find ourselves in where out of a nation of 300 million people, the best two political candidates for presidency we can offer is Hillary Clinton and, and Donald Trump um, and a good guy in my opinion like Bernie Sanders gets pushed aside um, I think it was just uh, the songs about being bombarded by so much media now and people being so dumbed down by the governments and, you know um, they're spending millions on you know arming themselves to the teeth starting wars in countries that they shouldn't be going to and we're being given our iPhones and our Apple products and, uh, you know, our television, dumb television shows. We're being kept in credit card debt, um, you know, and it's just like we were bombarded with this heavy fire of just trying to get through life and trying to, you know, find our way with, you know, people taking, you need this and you've got to have this, it's going to make you a better person and you need to wear this, you'll look better and don't eat too much and then, you know, hear how to lose weight and in the next commercials and you know let's go to Burger King and it's it's heavy fire it's just like what it's all this crap just yeah. coming at us at all times you know and I think it really just that was the idea yeah. behind the song yeah. yeah so how about this is the third album is it a difficult third album or was it's it easy not, no, yeah. uh, Many people thankfully say. it's not you know yeah. I mean we're we feel like we're just getting started I mean obviously yeah. it's been well documented we came out of Thin Lizzy and, and that was quite uh, a lot of turmoil just just with the first album now the band we feel is very established as Black Star Riders and, and we are our own band and, and yeah. so it feels like we're just getting started almost uh, so the third album was uh, we had a lot of ideas um, and we were very focused and, and it was actually really easy to write and really easy to record there was yeah. no yeah. Real problems. Uh, how did the creative process went? Uh, did you write the songs together in in jamming no, situation no, or was no, it separate? No, unfortunately, we live all over the place. Yeah, and for us to get together, it's very expensive. It just is. You know, we're all we're four of us in the United States of America, but we're all over that. And Scott lives in London, so uh, it's the way it's always been. Really, Damon Johnson and I do the bulk of the writing. And we'll send stuff to the other guys, and they get the, we get their input, and then we'll get together and um, yeah, uh, see what other ideas the guys have got. But mostly myself and Damon Jones. I write all the lyrics and quite a bit of the music, and, and, and then Damon and I write the bulk of material. You know. Okay. So uh, compared to the two first albums, uh, we've heard the first single when yeah. the night comes in just just came out, and it's it's kind of classic. It's it has that thin Lizzie and the previous sure. Black Star Riders sure. sound, but the rest of the album I've heard heard it. Uh, there's a lot of bluesy stuff, and it, right. it's a bit different. Yeah, I think than the first. I think two it albums. is too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So was that deli deliberate? No, I think that's just, just the way the songs came, came out. Yeah. You know, I don't think there was any conscious like let's make this different. I think mm-hmm. it was just you know, where you were at in your head at that moment of time and writing the songs. I think that, uh, you know, we all, we, we, again, we, we wanted to keep the big guitars and the big choruses, which I think makes Black Star Riders the band that it is. Um, so it was no real conscious effort. It was just, th- those are the songs that we wrote. I mean, we ended up with like 20 songs um, and we, we cut it down to 10. That was difficult because I think it's three or four songs. You know, it's funny because it, there's a couple of songs on the record that, if you'd asked me before we started recording, I would have said they're not going to make it. Oh, oh you know, okay. The, I, I, and then there's a couple of songs we left off, and you'd have asked me, I said they'll definitely be on the record. So it's a it's a good situation to be in to have that. But uh, that, a lot of that was done with our producer Nick Rascal and who who came in and, and really really pushes us really hard in the yeah, studio. Yeah. Yeah. How long did it take to record the album? It only took three weeks to record. Three weeks to record, okay. about a, and then Jay Rushton mixed it in about about a week. Yeah. Um, we did about two weeks pre-production. Yeah. 
yeah. before we went in. Uh, okay, you mentioned before that you all live separately all yeah. over the world. You yeah. have a very impressive lineup with people who've been in Megadeth, Rats, of course, of course. Uh, Thin Lizzy, obviously, you know, Alice Cooper's band yeah. and so forth. So how do you make it sounding like a band still with all the people coming from? I think the great thing about Black Star Riders and everybody, <coughs> nobody has any egos. Nobody's yeah. coming in going, well, you know, you've got to listen to me because I've played with, you know, everybody's, well, you, the key is an I've played, the past is the past. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you've yeah. done, this is about yeah. now. Yeah. I think everybody realizes that and there's no egos in the band, you know, mm. even the legend that is Scott Gorham is such a down to earth guy yeah. and very humble and mm. we, we get on very well together. Uh, you know, we're one of these bands that when we're on tour, we socialize together on days off. We go out to eat together mm. at night. We enjoy each other's company, um, mm. and I think that's why it works so well. Yeah. There's no agendas. There's no, well, you know, I, you know, I got to do this, and I've done that, and I've sold that many. Who cares? You know. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. and, and still, it must feel great to stand on stage with these guys. It's amazing. I mean, I, they make yeah. my job very easy. You know, I've always said that because I'm on stage with such fantastic players. You know, I look. Look to my left, there's Scott Gorham. Look to my right, yeah. Damon Johnson and Robbie Crane, and it's you're just like this. This is great, and Jimmy DeGrasso is such an amazing drummer. So it's it's a joy to play with these yeah. guys. Yeah. Uh, so we talked about uh, th- you made a name change to Thin from Thin sure. Lizzy to Black Star Riders, but you've still pe- played some shows. Uh, as yeah, Thin Lizzy, I mean, so. I mean, that's, Thin Lizzy is always <coughs> going to be it's Scott's Gorm, Gorm's band, you know, and, mm. and he. He said, "Look, guys, you know, I'd like to play a couple of shows this year, um, just to celebrate 40 years of Jailbreak, and I want to make it a big celebration. And you know, it's such an honor and a privilege for me to sing those songs. I'm like, absolutely, let's do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, and I think that's what will happen if there's any more Lizzie shows. It'll be, you know, one or two festivals. Okay, and that's it. But Scott is as focused on Black Star Riders as anybody, yeah. and that's." Yeah. You know, we call that the day job. Every anything else we do around it is the part-time job. The Black Star Riders is the, is the main, yeah. the main thing. You know. How, have you noticed any change in how you've been received after you changed the name? Uh, by the yeah, party? I mean, yeah. We, I think we everybody really respected the decision, and it was absolutely yeah. the right thing to do. And I think the fact that band now we've, we're on our third record, and you know, 99 percent, of the set list is Black Star Riders songs. Yeah. yeah. People yeah. and people want to come. People know when they're coming to see Black Star Riders. They're not coming to see Thin Lizzy. They're coming yeah. to see Black Star Riders. Yeah. And I think to be in that position, um, and, and from four years, is amazing. And, and, and a big thanks to everybody out there that's understood and appreciated what we've done. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously you're going on tour next yes, year. Yes. And yes. And yes. already I know you are coming to Sweden Rock Festival. We are, was yeah. already announced. Yeah. Yep. So what are the other touring plans for Black Star? Uh, I mean Riders? anywhere and everywhere we're, we're putting it all together right now. We're seeing now uh, where we can go and play and uh, you know I really really hope we we'll obviously I think we're going to get to Finland. Um, yeah, which would be great. Uh, that was actually my question. Yeah, no, lots of festivals. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know we didn't come here on the last record, which yeah. which sucked. Yeah. Um, So uh, we'll put that right this time around, and uh, I think we're planning to, to stay out for as long as we can. I mean, you know, the record success, the record dictates, you know, where you can play and how long yeah. you can play for. So hopefully, uh, we can, uh, how do you think the new songs will fit into the set list? Uh, I'm looking forward you, to it yeah. a lot. You know, I think we've got a rough idea already in our heads of what what ones we'd like to play. Um, so it's going to be interesting when we put it together. I mean, it's it's great that, like I said, we've got three albums worth of material to choose from now. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, maybe a little bit from your other project because you Absolutely. are still doing your solo band. I yep, understand yep. you are doing shows. Yep. So uh, how do you fit it into your schedule? You're just just whenever Blackstar Riders. When we we consciously, <coughs> our manager said, look, you know, uh, let's Blackstar Riders had toured pretty much for three years nonstop, and we knew we were going to write the Heavy Fire album. He said, look. I'm not, let's not do any shows for Blackstar Riders this year. Let's concentrate on the album. And he said it gives everybody a chance to do their other yeah. ideas. So that gave me a chance to, to tour with the solo band, The Fighting Hearts, to do some shows with Damon Johnson, acoustic shows too, which I do, and me, yeah. me and Damon do. Um, so I thought it, you know, it's really, you go to the management and go, okay, you know, what, what's our schedule? And uh, if he says Blackstar Riders, Blackstar Riders, but, you know, three months free, then I go, hey, can I do some solo shows? And, Yeah, that's, yeah, that's how it works. Uh, and was your last solo album uh, done via pledge music? Done via pledge, yeah, and, and then the same thing. And then I, I licensed it to Nuclear Blast for official okay. release as well. Yeah. So has it done well? It's done really well, thank you. Yeah, it's yeah. been great. Yeah. Um, I'm very happy with how, how, how yeah. it did and came out. And, yeah. You know, I've toured. We toured 
early in the UK we were a special guest for Stiff Little Fingers on their tour which was great and uh, this is the we just about to finish the headline tour with uh, the, my solo band the Fighting Hearts yes, yes so obviously you are known from the Almighty yes and actually this is the debut album that's Yay. I think 25 or 26 years ago 1989 yeah yeah came 27 out. years 27 ago. years what? already a long 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 time so yeah. What are your recollections of this album? Um, crazy times. Yeah. We were kids. We were just, you know, we were kids, and, and yeah. we were just couldn't believe that we were signed to a big major label like Polydor. I remember being so so excited signing to Polydor because of that red label, you know, that they had in the records, the Polydor yeah. label, and Jimi Hendrix was on at the Who, the Jam, you know, and I just remember going, oh man, you know, and I could see the old man. I was like, oh, this is amazing. Um, just yeah. amazing times, just so young, so full of attitude and energy mm-hmm. and, and naive, naivety as well, not really knowing what we were doing, yeah. you know, and, and a, a whole lot of innocence about the whole the whole thing. And yeah. I think, you know, that's the first record that, album that I've ever done. Um, that energy and spirit will never be recaptured again because you can't yeah. recapture that. That's yeah. your first time ever being in the studio, the first time ever playing. And it, there's something that you know. Once you've done that, it's gone. Uh, yeah, and and you, you can you know you can hear it because uh, in this uh, radio suit there's some live tracks. Yeah. I think and some radio radio sessions, and yeah. you can hear it. There's a yeah. lot of energy. There. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, yeah. we're very happy memories. Yeah, yeah. So what's the status of the band? Uh, I think now? the status of the band is you know is there is no band. Um, okay. That's what the status of the band is. I yeah. think. Um, and I don't think there will be no. ever again. I no think, chance. I think we've, we've reached that sort of where where it might have happened. Maybe it was a few years ago, um, and isn't you know nobody everybody's happy. You know, every, nobody's mm-hmm. like sort of going, well, you know, let's get the old band back together mm-hmm. because I think nobody really feels the need to. I think mm-hmm. everybody's, you know, uh, let's be honest. You know, if one of the guys phoned up and said, hey, you know, I'm really broke. I don't have any money. I need some help. Yeah, you go do a few shows because you got you can you know why not? You got to help some of your brother out, you know. But everybody's moved on and is very happy in their lives, um, so there's no need to fire the the Almighty back up. I think we said we did everything. We got back together a couple of times um, about eight eight years ago. Did a few shows and it was fun, but it was no, it wasn't like yeah, this is great. Yeah, Let's write yeah. another record, you yeah. know. Yeah. So. Maybe it's just better to leave it alone. I mean, I yeah. I do still play the songs live, and when I do my solo shows, I still play four or five Almighty songs, yeah. and I love playing them. I absolutely love playing them. So, you know, I'll, I'll always continue to do the that. The past is the past. I'm yeah, you know, and it was yeah. a great time, and and I don't think any of us are the same people now that we were, you know, 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay. You know, maybe it's just better to so, live with the memories. Yeah. So uh, I was listening to that album, The Almighty, Almighty's first album, and then the new Black Star Riders, and I noticed there's a bit of a change in your vocal style yeah, as well, yes. because it's definitely rougher. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can tell it's the same singer, but it's yeah. it's really different approach. Yeah, so what do you, you think know, about I used to shout back then. Yeah, you know? I couldn't yeah. really, I just, I wasn't, you know, <clears throat> I never really thought of myself as a singer. I was just, nobody else wanted to do it, you know, and I'm like, okay, I'll do it, you know. I just used to shout, you know. Mm. Uh, I think I've learned to sing over the years, um, just, yeah. You know, I have, and, and I've realized that you don't need to shout all the time to get your meaning across. And, you know, it's just an understanding of melody, of music, and the limitations of my voice. Um, and, uh, you know, I've hopefully become a better singer over the years with all the shows and albums that I've made. Mm. But I think that fits the time and fits the band, the attitude. You know, for me, it was more about attitude than it was about yeah. sound back then, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and now I think it's it's a it's an equal measure. You've got a great attitude, but you've got to be able to to sing too. Yeah, you know? yeah. So who were your main influences as a as a singer, as a vocalist, or new style? That um, you have, maybe? I mean, yeah, it was Lemmy. It was Jake Barnes with the Almighty. It was yeah. Lemmy, Jake Barnes, some stuff, little fingers. You know, um, you know, that was MC Five. You know, and they still are now to me. They're still they're still influenced. But now, you know, I listen to that. I still listen to soul music like Northern Soul, Tamla Motown, Van Morrison, Springsteen. You know, Johnny Cash, Hank Williams. Mm. So, you know, that's the stuff I, I listen to a lot now. You know. So obviously, Phil Lynott uh, was, Phil he was a big, huge. You know, I mean, what? as a lyricist, you know, 
there's none better brilliant and the way he phrases yeah. things and he was always an influence and, and, and Lizzie were always an influence on me my whole way through everything I've done yeah. Yeah. just in songwriting and and you know melodies and everything just great any, any last greetings for the readers of yeah Italian you know just you know, thanks for all your belief and your support um, it's you know I, I always say I, I, I'll do my best to make it rock but you know you guys out there make it roll and without you there's nothing so thank you very much Yeah, thank you, and we'll see you on tour. Hopefully Absolutely. in Finland. <laughs> no, we'll we'll be coming. I'll make sure of it. It's on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, thanks. Bye -bye.